Hello everyone and welcome to the STEM School Label High Level event. Today is the second day of the event. My name is Noel Bion and I'm coordinating European School Net activities in the STEM School Label project. Together with us today in the online room, we have my colleague Thomas Juskiv who will be supporting this event from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send him a message in the question and answer window. It is with great pleasure that I will introduce new speakers for today who are teachers, researchers, but also representatives of STEM organizations from various countries. Thank you so much to all of them for being here and presenting today. Now let me continue with some technical aspects. As yesterday, to get a greater experience out of this online event, you can use live captions and subtitles in English. To activate these, you just need to go to your video controls and select caption subtitles. There is a screenshot in this slide. You will also see a question and answer window in your screen. If you don't see it, make sure to open it because we will be sharing useful information and links with you there throughout the event. Also, as this is an interactive event, please feel free to share your questions to the speakers in this window. We will be collecting them and address them to the speakers towards the end of each presentation. As I mentioned yesterday, the STEM school label is financed by the Erasmus Plus program. For the event to be considered eligible, we must provide to the European Commission the full name and address of all participants. For this, if you haven't done it already yesterday, please make sure to go to the Padlet for the event through the link that is shown in the question and answer panel and provide your school or organization's full address. We would need the street, the number, postal code, city and country, and your full name, name and surname, as provided when you register to the event. Please make sure to do it if you haven't done it already yesterday. European Schoolnet is coordinating STEM school level. UN is a network of 34 ministries of education in Europe based in Brussels, which aims to bring innovation in teaching and learning to key stakeholders who are ministries of education, schools, teachers, researchers, and industry partners. STEM is one of European Schoolnet's major thematic domains, and UN have been involved in more than 30 STEM education initiatives financed through European Schoolnet members, industry partners, or by European Union's funding programs. As part of these initiatives, two are actually co organizing this event today Scientix, the Community for Science Education in Europe, and STEM Alliance. But where did the idea of STEM School Label come from? As we were discussing yesterday, the STEM school label was initiated following the discussions with our working group with ministries of education representatives under Scientix, which stressed the importance to support schools in working together and develop a STEM school strategy. STEM education is also about career, career path and preparing students and teachers for the skills that will be necessary for the future jobs. And in this sense, STEM Alliance brings together industries, ministries of education and education stakeholders to promote science, technology, engineering and math education and careers to young Europeans and address anticipated future skills gaps within the European Union. STEM Alliance has 17 companies which are working together in order to enhance the collaboration between the industries and the education sector. In order to develop the project, we joined forces in 2017 with four other organizations specialized in STEM education, who are from Lithuania, Portugal, Serbia and France. But how can schools get a STEM school label? Yesterday, we explained the different criteria defining a STEM school. Today, we are going to go deeper into the process of evaluation and let you know how can school get a STEM school label and what are the different steps. The objective of the STEM school label is to guide European schools in increasing young Europeans' interest and skills 
in STEM subjects and to provide the schools with the necessary tools to engage their students, teachers and other actors in related activities by developing an appropriate STEM strategy. With the STEM school level, schools evaluate themselves via an online self-assessment tool according to criteria defining a STEM school. Via the self-assessment form, required areas of development are identified and an action plan as well as resources are provided. As we mentioned yesterday, a STEM school is defined as a school with a clear STEM strategy characterized by seven key elements and a total of 21 criteria that you can see now on the slide. The seven distinct key elements that are considered in order to have an effective STEM strategy are the following instruction, curriculum implementation, assessment, professionalization of staff, school leadership and culture, connection, and school infrastructure. The complete list of these 21 criteria can be found under the link mentioned in the slide. And this definition is a result of uh, the European STEM Schools report, which builds upon a vast literature review and a thorough consultation process with schools, STEM teachers, ministries of education, and STEM industries as well. This report is available in English, but also in French, Serbian, Portuguese, and Lithuanian on the portal. An important question is raised when a school first wants to join the STEM school level, which is who can fill in the self-assessment on behalf of the school? Well, any stakeholder working in a school can register on the STEM school level platform and contribute to the application process on behalf of their school. However, the approval of the head of school is needed in order to proceed with the assessment and accreditation. There can be several persons referred as school contributors, school contributors on the platform and from the same school working on the self-assessment process, but only the person referred as school representative can submit the application form for the school. Let's now give you the step-by-step -step guide for the self-assessment of the school. First, the registration of the school. So you will first need to go uh, to the STEM school label, stemschoollabel.eu, and register by clicking on join us and follow the instructions in order to create your account. After logging in for the first time, click on user profile to edit your profile and add your school. Once you create your profile, it is really important that you affiliate yourself to a school. The second step is the preparation of the self-assessment. We encourage all participating schools to prepare thoroughly before they submit their self-assessment form, as this can only be edited after three months upon submission at the earliest, even after one year for the higher level. In order to prepare itself, the school can get familiar with the STEM school label, its 21 criteria, and the three different labels, which are competent, proficient, and expert labels, browsing the section that are on the portal and that are entitled Prepare, Collaborate, and Get Label. You will find the full guide on the portal. Checklist also about the different key elements defining a STEM schools are also available. Each checklist contains 10 statements that correspond to concrete activities that you and your school can implement in each of the seven key elements defining a STEM school. They will help you prepare your school's internal planning as you will be following the application process and you will see which type of activities you can implement to have a better score when submitting your self-assessment form. In fact, in order to improve your score, school practice evidence needs to be submitted and at least seven working days before submitting the self-assessment form. Those school practice evidence provide evidence and proof to answers from the school in the self-assessment form and to its activities related to one or more STEM school criteria. A school practice evidence 
are crucial for the self-assessment process, they should include a very good description in English containing all the key information plus a file or web link providing, for example, press clippings, videos, events agendas, photos, news on websites, certificates of evidence, which can be in any language. Besides, the participation in the platform will be taken into account when calculating the school's final score for the STEM school level. Yeah, case studies. Yeah, the participation to the monthly poll, post in the forum, and exchange with peers. I will come back to all those, those uh, elements of collaboration in a minute. But all these actions will count in the final score. Now it's time to start with the self assessment. As soon as a school has sufficiently contributed to the STEM school level platform, the next step is to go on with the self assessment form. Just like case studies and school practice evidence, the person that is referred as school representative can access the self assessment form on their personal account page. Yeah, the button My Organization. You will need to follow the steps indicated in the self assessment form. But before submitting it, remember that the school representative will not be able to edit the self assessment form after submitting, and that anything which has been evaluated before submitting will contribute to the school's final score. The fourth step is the improvement of the school STEM strategy and preparation to the next level. Once the school submits the self-assessment form, a personalized action plan is generated automatically. It is made up of various resources which can guide the school in improving its activities at the school level regarding the criteria which might need further improvement, depending on the answers chosen during the evaluation. This slide represents the self-assessment timeline. It's difficult to estimate exactly uh, the time that it takes to get a STEM school label for a school. The actual submission of school practice evidence and case studies as well as the submission of the self-assessment form does not take more than an hour in total. However, it is the preparation and assembling of information for the submissions that can take time. The time needed for this preparation depends on each school and can take anything from a day up to several weeks. From our side, we advise schools to submit their school practice evidence and case studies at least one week before submitting the self-assessment form so that these can be evaluated and taken into account for the final score. Final score. If eligible, the competent label is granted automatically and immediately and the review to pass from the competent to the proficient or expert label is done by a STEM school label coordinator who is an appointed expert in STEM education and this review is done during the last five working days of each month. Now going back to the school practice evidence that need to be submitted along with the self-assessment form. School practice evidence provides evidence to your answers in the self-assessment form. While the case studies that I just mentioned before or short reports on your school's past events. School practice evidence can be any document which provide proof to your answers in the self assessment form and to your activities related to a specific criterion. As I was mentioning, it can be any document like press clipping videos, events, agendas, uh, photographs, news on websites, certificates of attendance. As a rule of thumb, one could say that the evidence is about the current state of STEM activities at your school. Case studies, on the other hand, are some short reports on your school's past events and activities connected to the different STEM school criteria, as well as how your school dealt with them. As a rule of thumb, one could say that the case studies are stories about activities that lie further in the past but that you consider still worthwhile sharing with the community. Both school practice evidence and case studies need to be connected 
to at least one of the 21 STEM school label criteria to be accepted. Unlike case studies, submitting school practice evidence is mandatory to earn a label. There is no minimum amount of school practice evidence you have to upload. However, submitting both school practice evidence and case studies can boost your overall score and increase your chances of earning a STEM school label. If you are uncertain about how the whole process of getting STEM school label works, have a look at the full guide on the platform. You can check this page in particular, prepare, get label, collaborate, but remind, re remind yourself that you will have to sign in to have access. You can also check the different examples of case studies and school practice evidence on the galleries. By progressively developing its STEM strategy, a school can reach different level of, la of label. The competent label, which stands for a minimal practice of STEM school strategy. This means that the school is showing a commitment to developing a STEM school strategy with some aspects in place, but more needs to be done. And the proficient label, which corresponds to a more advanced approach to a STEM school strategy. And finally, the expert label for an outstanding practice for all criteria of a STEM school strategy. A school awarded uh, an expert STEM school will be actively supporting parents and also providing outreach for colleagues in other schools. Again, you will find the full scoring system in order to get the labels on the platform. If you're working in a school, and, and you would like your school to develop its STEM strategy and get a European label, join the community now and start the collaboration with other schools. We have over 1,500 schools which joined the initiative and more than 339 schools reached already the competent label. The portal is available in English, Serbian, Portuguese, Lithuanian and French, and we are working it in translating it into Dutch as well in the coming months. STEM school level is also an opportunity for school stakeholders to exchange among each other. We have for this the forum where you can exchange about anything that relates to a STEM school strategies and your activities about it. The STEM school label forum area provides an opportunity for exchange and good of good practices, experiences and ideas related to STEM strategy at the school level. We encourage school representatives and contributors to network, interact and address the common concerns they may have. The aim of this online discussion board is to provide the opportunity for users to engage in thoughtful constructive discussion with their peers and to give and receive feedback. We received already more than 10,000 posts on the forum and it was particularly interesting to see all schools exchanging online during this difficult period of COVID-19 and sharing tips and best practices. Besides, you can also participate to the monthly poll. All this participation again will help you boost your final score of evaluation and get a label for your school. 20 schools from Portugal, Lithuania, France, Serbia, Spain, Greece and Turkey have been appointed ambassador STEM schools. Ambassador STEM schools serve as good examples for other schools in Europe and representatives of these schools followed a two-day workshop in Brussels, during which UN provided with resources and extra guidance in order to help them reach the next level. They have worked really hard on developing their STEM strategy during their past few months and sharing their activities via the platform. Some of them already upgraded their label. We heard the testimonial from some of them yesterday and we will have more presentations today from some of them presenting their STEM school strategy. Ambassador STEM schools serve as good examples for other schools in Europe, but some of them also supported other schools already in their process of developing a STEM strategy. So don't hesitate to use with them if you have any doubt. Now, I think we have um, a question already from the audience. 
uh, can an NGO engage in STEM in STEM get a STEM school label? It's a very good question. Well, the label is for schools, but we are looking into extending to organizations, probably for 2020. We also have another question uh, from the audience. Do the school um, practice evidences need to be in English or can they be in their original language? Well, the school practice evidence information on the platform has to be in one of the current languages of the STEM school label, English, French, Serbian, Portuguese or Lithuanian. But the supporting materials can be in any language. Of course, you can find the full guides on the on the platform remind you about those aspects. But if you have any doubt, any technical issues during the uh, entire process, you can also contact or, or support desk. Now, if you are a company or other organization interested in STEM education, you can also get involved in STEM school label and embrace it within your activities. This is the case of our associate partners. We currently have three of them and they help us promote STEM school label and include the framework within their own activity. To tell you more about it, I'm pleased to introduce you with Kathleen Rubble, project coordinator for the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Flanders, Belgium. Kathleen, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Great. Well, she will explain to you how the STEM school label was used as a starting point for collaborations with industries. Caitlin, the floor is yours. Thank you. So indeed we have a project uh, called Into STEM and we use the STEM school label as a starting point for collaboration with industry. Um, maybe as an introduction, I'll tell you more about the name. So why did we choose Into STEM? Well, it stands for Industry to STEM. Uh, because we started the project on behalf of our industry platform. And this platform is a cooperation of uh, 21 industrial companies in our region, so Antwerp. Uh, companies like BISF, Atlas Copco, Maintenance Partners, um, and so on. And they face common challenges together. And there are many themes to be addressed, like climate change, circular economy, but also labor markets. And it's um, because of this last one that we started the Into STEM project. I'm sure it doesn't come to a surprise that um, that um, um, that there is a great shortage of STEM profiles uh, for the current and the future labor markets. Uh, to give you an idea. Antwerp is the um, largest petrochemical cluster in Europe and it comes uh, it, it's a uh, home to many uh, oh and it's home to many um, industrial companies and the prediction for the Antwerp region is that um, this deficit will only increase because of the upcoming waves of uh, retirement and also because of the planned investments in the port of Antwerp and because of the natural growth of companies. Um, the quantity of outflow of technical apprentices is uh, to the labor market does not match the industry's demand for technical talent. And in addition, companies notice that um, the knowledge of applicants is declining. And with our Into STEM project, we try to um, increase the quantity of STEM profiles, but also the quality, um, so that it need that it can meet the needs of our industrial companies. So our goal is to help high schools, so it's uh, secondary schools to develop internationally leading STEM education and thus meet the needs um, of our industry with a larger influx of suitable profiles. Uh, then the project setup. So at this moment we have uh, a pilot going on. We're still in this piloting phase with five high schools. Um, and they are participating to lift their STEM strategy to a higher level. 
And we do this in five steps. And the first one of those five steps is defining the existing state of affairs. Um, and we chose to use the European school uh, label, um, the STEM school label as a way to evaluate the schools. We guided them all through the process, for example, um, by translating some of the documents. Uh, translation in, in Dutch is, is to, uh, to become. Um, and um, we explained the way of evaluation to them. We guided them through the process every step. Um, and uh, the schools did this together. So they helped each other as well uh, to receive the label. And we had a direct line with the colleagues from um, from European Schoolnet, so with Noel, uh, for example, which came in handy for questions and remarks about the label. So uh, all five schools applied for the STEM school label, and after that, um, which was around the Easter holiday of this year, they all received an action plan and their scores, and we gathered them all and made a group report. So yes, step one, uh, the schools applied for the label. Um, we collected and analyzed the action plans, and then we proposed common priorities uh, action plan for the group of five schools. And the, um, the group report, you can see it here. Um, it's in Dutch, but I hope that you can recognize that the first column are the, the seven uh, key elements, the second uh, column are the 21 criteria, all from the STEM school label. And in the last three columns, you can find the average score, the maximum score, and the weight average score from the five schools. So these numbers are the, um, the I'm sorry, uh, the numbers are the, the score of the self-assessment. And uh, the color code is as follows. So you have the dark green, which is the schools already have a best practice. You have the light green, which means that they're uh, on the right track. And then you have the orange ones um, that there's clearly some work to be done to become a best practice. And when we analyzed the results from the five schools, we concluded that the lowest weight average score was found in the key criteria of instruction, uh, professionalization of the staff and connections. So it's uh, the first one, the fourth one and the sixth one. Um, and when digging, digging a little deeper into the action plans, we saw that they lost the most points in inquiry based science education professional development and connections with um, with parents and guardians, actually. But for that last one, we chose to focus on connections with the industry since um, the role of VOCA is to, um, well, we're a network organization for companies. So we had the greatest added value um, as a connector to the, to the industry. So we, um, we selected three main priorities to work on in the next school year, so the, the school year that needs to come. Um, and we started uh, three task forces, um, one for inquiry-based science education, one for professional development, and one for um, connections with the industry. And um, at this point, we closed the first step with three schools receiving the competent label and two schools receiving the proficient label. And right now we are at step two, so we are defining goals for the project uh, as a general uh, goal and specific goals for each task force. General goals are, for example, the increase of registrations uh, for STEM study fields in the, the participating schools. And specific goals are, for example, that um, for professional development that the the companies open up their courses or so their company courses that they offer that they offer to their employees to teachers as well um, another one is that we will develop an improved way of um, organizing internships uh, that makes sure that uh, the administrative uh, process for an internship runs a little bit more smoothly but also that and maybe that's even more important um, that students are prepared in a way that the company expects them 
to be prepared. So expectation management seems to be um, an important uh, element as well for the school as for the companies, as for teachers and students, of course. Um, so after the second step, the third step will follow. Um, all the plans we make should be implemented in the upcoming school year. And VOCA, um, so we, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, will analyze, document and keep up the lessons learned of the entire project. And the goal is to compile a manual or a toolkit for schools on how to become a state of the art STEM school using the best practices from our um, from our pilots and a new series of uh, the projects. Um, so when we let new schools apply uh, for the project. Uh, step number four is, of course, to improve the current way of working and change for the better. Uh, we want to make um, it a new way of, of STEM education. And in the end, we want to anchor down uh, everything we learned um, and everything that we set up. For example, the new way of organizing an internship we will develop um, should become the new normal um, in every school and in every uh, company in our region. Um, and we want um, for inquiry based uh, science education, we want to uh, launch a context, uh, a contest um, by the learning method of inquiry based science education, which will hopefully take place not only in 2021, uh, but every year. And we want to launch, launch um, a platform where companies and schools can find each other easily um, and so on. So we still have a lot of work to do right now. Um, but uh, of course, we will get there. Um, maybe a small word on how we are organized. So we have a steering committee uh, with the principals from the schools and later on um, the chairman from the task forces. And then we um, uh, this uh, steering committee will keep the project overview and make the decisions. For example, uh, they, appre they approve um, the goals of each task force and so on. And as you heard me say, um, we have task forces. There is one per priority. So in this moment, we have three task forces um, and they are actually the masterminds behind the improvement of each um, action point. And from um, for each task force, we have a chairman from a company and uh, representatives from uh, different companies that are all um, cooperating on the project. Now, why do we use a STEM school label um, for this process? Um, so, well, the value of the label that we see is that it provides a common language. Um, when you talk about STEM education and what is a STEM school, well, it's a lot. Um, but um, as Noel stated in the in the introduction, um, they developed these seven key elements with 21 criteria, and it didn't go overnight. It was a it was a study uh, in which they they um, cooperated with governments, schools, um, teachers, and companies as well to have a definition of what is what makes a school a STEM school. Um, second point is that uh, it's an international standard. Um, it gives a little bit more value because also the companies that we work with are international companies um, and it gives a little more value to, um, to the label and to the process. Um, third point is it's an objective evaluation. So, okay, it's a self-assessment. The schools uh, evaluate themselves. But with um, with uploading all the evidence and the case studies, uh, they are reviewed by the language coordinators um, from European Schoolnet. So they have a check on well, is is the school indeed a STEM school? Uh, th there is a, an extra uh, review. Then um, the the STEM school label all also serves as a framework for existing initiatives. So in Belgium, there is already a lot going on about STEM education. But with this label, we, we actually have this, this framework in which they can all fit. 
Um, so it's, it's kind of a guidance and it helps us uh, structure everything we have. And then fifth of all, it initiates, initi um, wow, it initi initiates, wow, why can't I say it? It initiates change for the better. Um, so it's a starting point to evaluate themselves, but also to see um, for which criteria do, do we need to deep do we need to do more? So of course, it's nice to have a label to be competent, proficient or expert in STEM education, but um, it's not the label itself, but the process towards the, the STEM education and the development of, of STEM education that is most important. Um, so yes, that's my... Um, my presentations. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Kathleen. It was very interesting and uh, to see how uh, your organization embraced uh, STEM school label within its activities. Uh, we have several questions actually from uh, the audience today for you. Uh, first, uh, you mentioned a toolkit on best practices uh, about your pilot project. Uh, can you let us know where maybe we will be able to find it uh, and when and if it will be available in English or in Dutch only? Well, it will be in Dutch because it's it's for the the schools in in Belgium in Flanders. Uh, we didn't we, we don't have it yet. We are still um, working on having all the best practices, and of course, the best practices that they use will also be uploaded in this in the portal of the STEM school label. So there you can find it anyway as well. But um, what we're developing is this this toolkit in Dutch that is. Um, Applicable, uh, it's applicable for the schools in in Flanders. Um, that also um, the policy that that's in Flanders is incorporated, so to speak. Okay, and can you maybe le let us know already uh, what will be the license for this report and uh, if. Uh... It, it will be public so I can send it uh, okay, so that great. it can be. Because um, maybe we can public. we can also see in the possibilities of uh, translating it. Of in course. all the languages. Great. Of course. Uh, well, I have a, another question uh, also. What would you tell other companies or chambers of commerce in other regions or countries of why it is worth the effort to do all the work you're doing to support schools? Well, it's a long term investment, of course. Um, and um, yeah, we needed to explain to the companies, of course, that well, um, especially for, um, um, for example, uh, chemistry, it's not when you uh, graduate from, from uh, high school that you can immediately start. Um, well, it depends on the, on the study field, of course, but most of students um, go to higher education as a next step and then they go to the companies. But there is such a great need for um, STEM profiles that companies see the the, the importance um, of um, of uh, inspiring scholars as well for STEM education because it starts already in high school that they need to be inspired to go for a to go for an um, an education in, for example, chemistry or or uh, something else um, that is uh, STEM related. That's, is that a question? Uh, is that an answer to your question? Yes, absolutely. Inspiring uh, future carry fast. Um, we also have a question actually from the Maltese Ministry of Education. Uh, what kind of support do you get from companies? Well, at this moment, it's um, um, engagement. Um, it's um, well engagement. It, it's um, it's voluntary that they. Uh, that we we um, we get their time <laughs> to cooperate uh, and their knowledge. So, for example, they will be um, providing workshops for us with the principals and with the teachers. Um, so it's not that we get uh, resources in money; it's resources in skills and knowledge from the employees of the companies. OK, thank you. And another uh, question also that we received, uh, making cooperation, cooperation with industry companies is hard for her post-secondary schools. 
So what can we do gain such um, such a project? Um, so um, if I understand correctly, it's difficult that um, for high for um, secondary schools for um, for upper secondary schools actually to make cooperation cooperation with industry companies. It's difficult to do to make the connection with with the company. Yes. 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 So that's that's our role as 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 Voca. Of course, we are a network of companies, and uh, for us, the companies are easily accessible. So that's why we take up that role to to um, to be a bridge between the schools and the companies. Um, so I don't know in other countries um, how this yeah. role can be taken up, of course. But well, actually, I want to add up on your on your contribution because we have the STEM Alliance initiative actually that also helps schools connect with companies at, at European School Net. So I invite also the participants to have a look at the activities of, uh, of STEM Alliance where we provide a number of resources in order to bring closer the education and the industry sector uh, together. Uh, there is a number of resources is webinars, but also um, possibilities to 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 engage uh, with uh, with industries. So, if there is any um, any uh, secondary schools or or primary schools actually interested in getting uh, engaged with uh, with other industries, uh, you uh, feel free to to have a look at the STEM Alliance website as well. Thank you very much, Kathleen, for your contribution. Um, and um, to give now maybe the voice to schools representatives about their experience getting involved in the STEM school level. Uh, I would like to introduce Mladen Slijovic, who is a physics teacher from Serbia. Uh, Mladen, Hello. how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing great so far. Great. Well, the STEM school level experience started uh, with uh, with you and your school, Zimna Zelta uh, in Serbia as early at the platform pilot phase and shortly after uh, your school were selected as one of the ambassador STEM school, a role that you took upon very seriously and uh, and Mladen will explain to you uh, how sharing activities and learning from other schools is crucial and how the STEM school label contributed to it. Mladen, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh... We have to start with uh, introducing our school first. And uh, to start that, just a second. Ah, here we go. Uh, we are the one of the four oldest high schools in Serbia and our tradition is more than 180 years long, which is we are something that we are extremely prideful. And you can find us in the eastern part of uh, Serbia that's uh, near Bulgaria border. Our school currently has 350 students and more than 50 teachers, uh, with students gaining access to one of the four uh, main courses, uh, natural sciences, social science, general science, and of course, uh, a newly formed class for the students that are gifted for IT. We are talking about uh, children that have to pass special exam in order to become part of this class. Uh, what we need to do is uh, when you think about your strategy and what you want to do, you need to start from somewhere. You need to start from uh, one point. And what I find it's the most easier, most easiest way to start something is by doing a SWOT analysis. And here we have one. Uh, I'm not going to read it uh, section by section, but uh, I'm just going to say that uh, uh, when you do a SWOT analysis, there are a lot of mistakes you can make, and most people tend not to overlook uh, their weaknesses or threats, and this is not what is uh, SWOT all about. SWOT is actually to identify where are you the weak and what can you do to improve yourself. So when we look down at uh, when we look at, at our SWOT analysis, we decided to uh, you, uh, to have um, to create strategies, and here we have an example of uh, two. And one is to use the Erasmus project, 
and the other is to use experience of career guidance team uh, to write projects and in order to get better equipment. Well, uh, our what we did at first is we formed a team to write a K1 project. Uh, the project was uh, successfully approved at that year, and here we have a meeting of our school members of uh, that team. And you can read more about the project itself on uh, our blog, School of Tomorrow Soft Blogspot. There's a link down there. But uh, what really is interesting is that uh, during this project we had the opportunity to visit one of the schools and uh, that school was a technical school, a vocational school in Manavgat, Turkey. Uh, why is this important thing to mention? Uh, because uh, we sent two of our teachers to visit and stay there for one week to observe what are the other schools are doing? How are they dealing with the problems? How are they helping their students? But uh, what we gained was uh, much, much more. Our teachers gained contacts that actually allowed us to find uh, new partners for this year. So we are not only continuing to work with this uh, school from uh, Manavgat, uh, we are actually uh, uh, they gave us the contacts of their friends and they included us in their project. And this is a very good starting uh, point for everybody. If you find one school and you prove yourself that you are uh, the good partner, that you are reliable, that you want to work, uh, the doors will open. Uh, currently, we are waiting uh, for uh, K2 calls to be honest, uh, results to be published. And uh, thanks to our host, uh, we actually found a couple of partners and other schools approached us uh, since they heard the good things about us and they wanted us to become part of project. So we are hoping to continue collaboration with uh, not just one school, but uh, at this time, 10 other schools from Europe. And like I said, I, I, when I talk about collaboration with other schools, this is one thing I like to mentioned because uh, one uh, project actually led to opening doors to other projects as well. And this is the, what it's all about when you collaborate. You give, you take, you receive, and uh, you all become better and better. Well, another thing, and completely away from this, but we also used the experience we gained from our K1 project is, uh, well, you have, I hope you know, recognize this guy. This is Kurt Vonnegut. He is actually one of the best writers there is in the world. And to me, at least. And his book, Cat's Cradle, this is not a STEM book. It's not about uh, the STEM, it's not about science, but it is about uh, incredible things that surround science. And uh, in the cat's cradle, uh, he's actually uh, he actually has an excellent sentences. It's it's almost uh, it's one of the best things I ever read about the stem. He says that uh, if you cannot explain your job to a six-year-old, you don't understand it. So, oh. You might think how what this has to do with another schools. We are the high school. We are working with students that are 15 to 18. Well, this is a, a challenge. We actually decided to turn in another project. And uh, what we presented our students were uh, the following, uh, the, the so-called driving questions. Uh, how can we teach physics to a six year old? And can we understand physics without the math? Because at the six year old, the math uh, operations are basic uh, level. So we needed them to focus more, but uh, not focus more on uh, explaining the phenomena. Now, uh, why is this uh, uh, good? Because uh, at the time we collaborated with uh, Edina Jorovic and Nasha Radost, preschool uh, from uh, Subotica. 
and uh, our students were given the task. They were the one who needed to uh, create experiments with explanation, not just show and tell, not just like they do in the magician show when you are amazed by something. We, we wanted them to do something that the kids at six year old could understand. And to make it even more complicated, we decided to focus on uh, thermodynamics. At the time, my second year of students was uh, in the course of thermodynamics, and uh, I wanted to avoid the classical question, the classical tests uh, with a lot of formulas and a lot of uh, explanation and theory. I wanted them to uh, find experiments that are actually uh, using the knowledge their game. And here we have, this is the picture of uh, our friends from uh, Subotica. They're actually performing one of the experiments. This uh, this was a bit of a, ta a challenge. They send us an experiment and they say, OK, we want to know why is this happening? And we gave our students uh, a sort of a competition because at the end uh, they voted for the, the kids from uh, Subotica, voted for the best explanation. And you actually cannot use uh, mathematics, you cannot use, OK, this is the pressure, this is... No, you have to use everyday terms. You have to understand well enough how does something work. And this is the title of this project. You have to understand how does something work and then you can explain it to everyone, including uh, our uh, friends. And this is another picture. Uh, at the time, uh, the friends uh, from uh, our little friends from Subotica entered the competition, and uh, we decided to help them by creating uh, a light source. So at the time, our students were actually creating uh, a light source to be used for the kaleidoscope. And this was our present for them. And it was all done during the school time. This is the one project that I actually hoping to repeat again with another area of uh, physics, because uh, what I actually get from it is uh, I could actually see how well my students understand the lessons we are talking about. Uh, it's not just uh, to memorize the formula. I always keep saying that uh, once something you memorize will be forgotten in uh, five to ten days after the test. No, this was the way to see how my students are thinking, to see how creative they can. Can they give good scientific explanation and uh, make that explanation be completely true and completely understandable. Well, this is not such an easy task. Uh, any parents uh, will tell you that. Sometimes uh, kids have the questions that are just way over our head. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the bigger the challenge, uh, the more you work, the more you improve, the more energy you give, and the more satisfied you will feel. And uh, another project which we did was this one when we decided to use uh, this was a part of a much larger project to use the games to learn stem now most games focus on the, the fun part and not educational part so we wanted our students to uh, find a way to use games in order to uh, help someone learn something and uh, the project was actually supported by uh, Center for Promotion of Science in their public call for the last year. Uh, what, we, uh, what our students uh, did finally was that they created our workshops. And these workshops were actually presented to other schools. So uh, in like 16 workshops, uh, we visited 11 schools from uh, seven towns and uh, more than 400 students attended. This was not done by teachers. This was completely done by kids. The teacher was only there to drive them or uh, to, you know, to be there if something happens. But uh, once you enter the classroom, 
you are all it, it all happens uh, to uh, it's all left to kids and it was a beautiful thing to watch uh, have the kids from uh, their their first workshop which they were they were, they were nervous they were to they didn't know how to activate the classroom and uh, in the how to, from that they get to uh, excellent peer educators they actually uh, tr uh, have a better way to approach another kids and not just with the game with with uh, with the uh, inquiry base because they ask okay what is this going to happen if we do this what is going to happen if we do that what do you think about this and, and this actually was uh, one of our uh, one of my favorite projects i have done this year besides this uh, great results uh, like i said 400 students from 11 different schools uh, in seven other towns that's impressive even for some uh, uh, teachers and teacher educators and not just for our kids well i would like to conclude uh, now at uh, what uh, what all we got uh, why do we share this is this is one of the the big uh, the big questions you have because uh, sharing actually means they had to have to give something and receive something so what did we give well we gave ideas we gave our time because we try to be better and work more and uh, so and we created all these peer workshops that are, can actually be used now by other students in their school but uh, what we got was uh, much more we got uh, new friends uh, we got uh, our students that improved skills of uh, soft skills not just hard stem skills uh, we also have uh, teachers that are learning new things and of one of the best thing uh, of, of course is that uh, we gain partners for future projects and the other schools are looking forward uh, to hear from us again, collaborate in future. And this is what sharing is all about. Um, thank you so much. Like I said, uh, thank it, you, Mladen. Yeah. Thank you, Mladen. And, and indeed, we really appreciate your, your support, sharing your best practices. Uh, I also want to inform uh, the audience that uh, as an ambassador STEM school, your, your school actually had a lot of school practice evidence and case studies published uh, on the galleries of, uh, of case studies and school practice evidence on the STEM school label platform. So other schools can also have a look uh, at them. Uh, and there was actually a question from the audience on whether schools from other countries can also get uh, this label and uh, of course I want to answer of course the presentation from VOCA um, was about specific support to schools in Antwerp Belgium but uh, as you saw from the presentation from uh, from Laden uh, the platform is also open to all schools and possible to all um, Nam Laden a teacher also asked in the audience uh, I got a label what path should I follow next year to improve the action plans after submitting the self-assessment form for the school, for example, helps and also for primary schools, right? Uh, I'm not sure what to say, but uh, the best idea is that uh, you see what you identify your weak parts, you identify your strong parts and then you use that strength to overcome weakness. Actually, uh, your action plan is a good start. You have to read it. You have to uh, you, you have to gather your team around you and then you can work together, have ideas, uh, use any opportunities you can see. Uh, basically, in one word, you have to work. Thank you, Mladen. And, Thank you. Uh, and we also have one one participant actually uh, put a comment. Uh, collaboration uh, is a very important step for big projects. Uh, to that, actually, I would add that uh, collaboration is not only an important step for big projects, but also uh, for all projects. So thank you again, Mladen, uh, well. for uh, your insight today. Uh, and you as you mentioned, time. again, it is really important to support STEM education. 
Uh, in line with this objective, uh, I would like now to introduce a new speaker today, uh, Jessica Newwind from Indire in Italy, who will present her expertise regarding education initiatives for STEM from the research point of view. Jessica, how are you doing today? I am fine, Noah. thank you for having me here. So um, to start my presentation, I have to request control. Sorry, I forgot it. You told me so, but <laughs> in the training station. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for being here and uh, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So I will start. I'm, I'm Jessica Nivent and I'm the head of the research department for regarding the use of new technologies for innovative laboratory teaching methods of Indira. And Indira is the National Institute for Documentation Innovation and Educational Research, and actually it's the oldest research organization that works or together with the Italian uh, Ministry of Education. So today, today, okay, let's just click on it to get on. Okay, so we got it. Today, um, you wanted me to talk about um, education initiatives for STEM. And um, first, I have to say that for me, it's not equal to teach simply more STEM subject, but I think it's clear to everyone who's following this event today. So or even worse, that you have to teach more STEM, STEM subjects in class separately. And um, so it's not like let's do more chemistry or let's do more math problems. So we have we are doing more STEM teaching. And we have to avoid this silo teaching. And if the speaker before me, Ladon, said that was a very great and <laughs> exciting example what they have done in their school. So um, they have to do integrate STEM subjects, even integrate STEM set subjects in, um, in what you're doing every day, in the teaching you already have every day, but connecting them one with each other. So. Um, STEM is about different disciplines working together and therefore they have to be also taught together. And since I'm speaking to you, I think even the word taught isn't really a happy choice. I wrote it, but I'm not happy with it because maybe it would have been better to write experience. They have to be experienced together. So it would be better to write STEM is about different disciplines working together and therefore they have to be also experienced together because for the experience of STEM, the students have to get active in the classroom. They're guiding by themselves, their curiosity, their learning experience. And what brings us directly to the next sl slide, click on it, okay, um, which presents a very, very short and absolutely non-exhaustive list of teaching methods. And for me, on the right side, some center proxima of active teaching learning in the classroom. So the most approaches to promote active and deep learning in the classroom and active learning are shortened by acronyms like PBL and DBL and CBL, an exception that maybe is clear. So it's like problem on pro project based learning, design based learning, um, challenge based learning. And uh, for me, as a researcher, when I'm observing what is going on in class, sometimes it's pretty difficult to draw the lines between all these approaches, even if they are theoretically very fine, well defined. So, um, for example, as a math teacher, I decided to propose a problem based learning approach to make students think about the Pythagorean theorem. So when they get to the point of proving the theory, maybe the students with parents from foreign countries like me, that I'm German, but I'm living in Italy and um, my kids going to the Italian school. Um, maybe they they could observe that their parents had learned it differently, differently or actually have no clue like me. And uh, they didn't even have the right vocabulary. So um, this maybe could lead in the class if the teacher leave the freedoms to their, to their students. Um, that they try to explain it how it how they do it in different countries and this leads also to different vocabulary and this is actually a clear approach so often giving the students the freedom to follow their own lead their curiosity and um, their interest can get the things a little bit messy for the teacher because it not always brings there where you expected to go maybe you plan the lesson then you end up 
somewhere else. So it's everything's a little bit messy and uh, messed up. And so it's difficult to put everything in definition box. So um, I'm personally looking also for often looking for the key elements and which I wrote on the right side. So for me, it's more important what happens in class is uh, the activity guided by the students. Is it student centered? Have they the freedom to connect their subject they're interested in and um, they are more disciplined. They are, have the freedom to connect more disciplines together. Maybe they I don't know, it's it's about um, physics or art to connect or um, math and science or they have to do a graph or representation or a model. So um, for me, this activity also is lead by an open ended question and um, is there's more than one outcome and also the use of ICT. It's not that you know how you write in text in Word or how do you do a PowerPoint um, presentation, even if it's very important as we see today, but um, it may be how to color text. So no, it's important in the STEM approach or in using of ICT in the classroom that you can use the ICT, the new technology to express yourself in another way. That maybe if you're for you, it's easier to explain something by voice um, instead of uh, writing a resume that you can do a short video explanation. Or if it's if you try to make a model and just the drawing is not enough, then you're able to use a PowerPoint animation because it's easier. You will go make a scratch program just to explain yourself better. So. I think this is how also the new technologies have to be integrated in the classroom. And for example, I can give you some kind of learning scenario and it's something that um, I see also yesterday or yesterday in, in a meeting of the Ministry of Education in the afternoon. Um, I actually realized how all the projects um, promoted by European School Nights fits together and often they're really connected to, to them. and. So this is an example from um, the STEMED project where the MOOC is starting, I think this autumn. And so to make uh, STEM more integrated, because um, as I said before, it's it's not only that I teach more math or that I do an, a chemistry experiment, it's that uh, somehow you have to connect it and uh, even the board is 360 degrees. So um, you have to put a little bit more than that. And this is an example for a learning scenario where we connect the subject like citizenship, science, art, math and music. And then you will also observe that the A in the STEM is missing. OK, but uh, like in the definition for the learning methodology, sometimes it's I don't know, it's a little bit. Um, I don't know how useful is discussing about it if there's an A or not. So um, for me, the A is, is all uh, because the world is whole and it's difficult to experiment even science without art, for example, because sometimes you have to draw a model, you have to express yourself, you have to put down dynamic observation, you have to put it in words as my, uh, the presenter before me told me. So the, the students have to describe um, what they have observed in simple words and they have to put it that simple without any math that they can explain it to a six year old. And I think this is a point because if you're explaining an, from observing and then you explain in another observation again and then you cover maybe and what you explain some elements are the same and from your explanation one and two you can then draw a model. I think it's it's a really big success because you made a model from a science observation that a six year old can understand without any math. And uh, in the end, you put math in it because um, uh, the science observation, it's like that, that you find some rules, some hidden rules in everyday observation. So um, the next slide, um, I want to demonstrate it for me. STEM education, what it really is for me, it's a Trojan horse and um, to open up the classes, the classroom and to get students in the school more open, open in time and spaces, but open also to the ter 
territory, so to um, the industry that's surrounding them, to the museums, to, to the landscape, to um, how you can engage with the everyday problem of your country or of, of your city. So um, I think these are the famous real world problems that uh, every student has to connect to. And I think if you're giving the students more space in time and really in informal spaces to get out of the classroom to experience, to learn what fits better to them, um, they're only getting better. And I'm running out of time because Nora said to me 10 minutes and it's like the holy hand grenade of Monty Python. So 10 minutes only and we present the last slide <laughs> because to realize, oops, no, how can I get back? Well, put it back. Thank you. To realize all this, I think we don't have to leave the teachers alone and as it emerges here, they are uh, really, for me, four dimensions they have to work together. And this is the teacher, the students and mentalities in class. OK, for sure. Space and time that they are not closed in a classroom. They are, have to sit there and only listen that they it's like hands on and hats and hard on what they're doing. That's as the leadership, leadership from the school principals, but also leadership from teachers and students and um, stakeholders. And um, I think if you put everything together, maybe we'll be, it would be possible not only to introduce STEM in schools, but change schools with STEM. And that will bring us to students that I think uh, they are curious again and um, they have no fear to fail and they are able to try. So that's it. Sorry, no, I just exaggerated a little bit. Well, thank you, Jessica. It was really interesting presentation. Uh, and uh, I have uh, actually two questions uh, for you. Uh, how hands-on uh, approaches can be implemented in laboratory teaching during, uh, during this period uh, that we're facing right now of distance education? Um, yeah, this is a difficult thing and um, also for us it was quite a challenge because uh, in my research department we are working with laboratory teaching and, and then we ran out of students in schools because everyone stayed at home. So um, surprisingly um, the teachers were very innovative and um, got a lot of it ideas and one example is that they um, used also Microsoft Teams and um, split their class in groups. It was a third grade elementary school. And, and then they um, go on with scratch programming that the students organized by themselves in groups of four or five students. And they by themselves, aided by the teacher, just go on with their scratch programming. And um, some, they split it up in groups. Some other decided to do um, some plastic work and a model real 3D model at home and that they have done alone by themselves but with their parents and then um, they put it all together in um, in a photomontage they just uh, all the pieces to to make it seems like real and when they hopefully go back to school in September they really make join all the parts and we will see so yeah it was was a great experience for me well, this is a great example indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another question also related to uh, distance learning and teaching. Uh, how can you carry out the assessment according to you during this period? Uh, also, this is a very difficult thing because in Italy, um, the, just what the message from the Ministry of Education that every student is promoted to the next year. So definitely there was no use of assessment. Um, at all in this very moment. So students are very happy about it, but in the end, it's I think it's not <laughs> a solution. So um, I think um, as yesterday was said, I think we have to switch to formative assessment. So how do we know that they know? And um, it cannot be only content. So I think we um, have to be more, pay more attention how they approach to a problem and um, maybe have only some key explanations or maybe um, drawing a map or a model where we it cannot be only content. We'll see. Thank you, Jessica, for sharing okay. your views on this. Thank you. Uh, thank, no, th um, 
Now I would like to give the floor to the partners of a project who played an important part uh, in the development of the tool and the initiative. For this, I would like to introduce Felipe Carmo and Cesar Marquez from Ciencia Viva in Portugal, who will present about the strategy in Portugal regarding STEM education. Felipe and Cesar, how are you doing today? Hello, good morning, uh, Noel. Good morning. And good morning. And thank you for this kind invitation for this brilliant event. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you for being here. Well, the floor is yours for your presentation. Okay. So, as you said, my name is Philip Carmen. I work in the education department in Cecilia Vivan in Lisbon. Um, I'm here with my colleagues as a marker, and we are going to split our presentation in two. So, I will start by talking about STEM education in Portugal. I will be brief, so we have only 10 minutes. Um, I will pass the slide. Okay, so oi. I think I that's too much. How can I go back? I think it's the, the first one. So in order to improve in order to improve the um, uh, in order to improve the same education in Portugal, the Portuguese government uh, and educational policy leaders have been working in, on this empowerment. So this effort was closely related to the commitment to research and development, while at the same time we work to increase public awareness of science in schools and in the general population. Concerning STEM, the goals were twofold. The first one, uh, it is increased to increase the skills of all students and teachers in STEM in order to improve their ability to address increasingly complex problems. And second one, increase the number of students who pursue STEM careers and advanced studies by raising awareness of the importance of STEM and by raising interest in STEM subjects. Uh, the two reasons for this, for this strategy are STEM skills, oi, STEM skill, sorry, oi, yeah, here. STEM skills are understood as a critical to foster economic development, while occupations are among the highest paying and fastest growing. And STEM graduates enjoy low employment rates as well. So now some numbers in, in, uh, in our country, in Portugal, the number of STEM graduates in Portugal is the one of the highest among OCDE countries. And uh, five years ago, 28% of higher education students complete studies in <coughs> STEM areas, above the average of 23% of uh, OCDE. But on the other hand, we uh, have only four out of 10 young people arrive at uh, universities here in Portugal. So we have to to work and we have to sorry back please we have to we have to provide more teachers training in STEM areas and here Ciencia Viva plays a very important role in this matter and we we want more prepared citizens with more scientific uh, literacy and uh, ensure that all citizens have access to training in scientific, scientific careers, no matter their age and socioeconomic status. So I'm finished and thanks, uh, thanks to listening to me. Now I'll give the floor to Cesar. And sorry for this. <coughs> Oi. Okay. Can you have the control, Cesar? I think so, yes. So my my work with the CS I thought I had the the control. Yeah. My work with Ciencia Viva in the STEM area start about 2010 when my kids appears uh, in my class asking to participate in Solar Colleague and they build a, a solar chair. 
outside my classes. Uh, I gave them some help uh, to project the, the solar wheelchair um, and to electrify it, but outside my classes. In that time, I, I, I call myself now, nowadays a traditional teacher, but working with IT, a kind of ITCTT. <clears throat> when I prepare my classes in that time, I expect to 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 be uh, to my my kids to to love physics as much uh, as I do. Uh, so I prepare my classes, expecting very uh, uh, focused students. And I had I had at least one student. Uh, the others uh, talking with each other. Some some kids try to sleep and stuff like that. So I have to change something. And I start to uh, search for information. I heard about uh, inquiry based science education, start to, to learn about it. And uh, I inspired the, another project that I found online. And I built uh, boxes to study uh, thermodynamics. And with that boxes, I uh, work again with Ciencia Viva in the Cidade Sustentáveis, uh, part of March project. At the same time, I start to, to, to go to teacher training, try to understand better what is that inquiry base and how can I implement it in my class uh, and not work outside the class, uh, but use the project in my class. That was my goal. And with that teacher training, I, I tried to, I start to, to use that in my classes uh, in the first image. Uh, you can see my kids outside uh, working with the Arduinos and measure pressure to determine to find out the the uh, height of a, a small hill in the uh, my city. I work with vocational training. Uh, I used to work in a vocational training school. Uh, in the second image, uh, you can see my students in class uh, preparing uh, the scientific mission for uh, our CANSAT uh, competition Particip uh, the, where we can use two cameras from the Photonics Explorer kit to, to make stereo uh, photographs. So I, I, with the teacher training also, I start to use the, uh, the, the materials that I uh, get there and implemented inside and outside the classes. <clears throat> and with that experience that I start to gain, uh, I start to to mix some projects. For example, I, I want to to my students to build uh, airplanes, but I want to give also physics. So I mix a little of the CANSAT idea and they have to build a scientific mission and install sensors in that uh, airplanes uh, and then try to fly it, the hardest part. The same idea with the underwater rovers. Um, they have to build it with the plans that I found online, but then they, they have to put sensors and uh, connect that sensors with the box outside the water and throw it in the water and make scientific missions with that. Uh, Ciencia Vila helped me also to, to expose our work. Uh, this is Ciencia 2018, the biggest science uh, exhibition or uh, encounter in Portugal. Uh, we were invited to, to show our work with the airplanes and the underwater roads. And give me also the the opportunity to to learn about new ways of teaching, and uh, try to to teach uh, with other teachers from other areas, as a, in the open school for open societies, where I can can go outside with the, my students outside the classes at night in this case, but to to, to get uh, material to work in our class, uh, in this case in the dark sky rangers, and also. Uh, inside the classes and make missions to, to AstroPy uh, from as a competition. So I can say that the Ciencia Viva helped me with a lot of things. 
here are a few things uh, that I that uh, give me the help to to transform my classes from a traditional way to uh, active teaching way uh, using STEM mixture with air art. Uh, also, in the airplanes, they have to uh, to to uh, design the and study uh, paintings and uh, uh, from old artists, the first impressions uh, of the flying machines um, and other stuff. So without Ciencia Viva will be much harder to 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 evolve as a teacher. Uh, and I like to thank the, the opportunity to to be here sharing uh, the work again. Thank you, Cesar, for, for sharing best uh, your practices uh, uh, as a teacher. And thank you, Felipe. Uh, we have actually one question uh, for Felipe. Um, uh, why were, was Sciences Viva interested in joining a STEM school level initi initiative uh, at the beginning? And uh, yeah, why were, what were your interests in, uh, in developing such uh, initiative in Portugal? I think we, we from the beginning of Sese Viva, we, we work with lots of uh, teachers in schools. So I think it, it was um, a big opportunity to work on, on this matter. So uh, we cannot uh, lose this opportunity. So Sese Viva is, is in with you. So <laughs> Thank you. And do you, <laughs> did you receive any feedback from schools about why they were interested in, uh, in joining and uh, develop this framework? Yes, we we receive lots of emails and uh, lots of um, issues um, from teachers, and we try to help uh, them um, the better we can. So I think um, the the teachers, the, all the teachers we work with, us, um, they know uh, they have a, a good partner here. So uh, we try we try to satisfy all the teachers and all the issues that uh, they have. So. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Philippe, for being here and thank you, Cesar, for also presenting today. Uh, now, in order to give you another example of how the network, the STEM school level network is developing and how to promote STEM school level, I would like to pass on the word now to François Bernier and Elena Giuliani from La Maison pour la Science d'Alsace in France. Uh, François, Elena, how are you doing today? Well, I think they're there. They're going to present about the, the STEM strategy in France and how they're working on making STEM school level known in, uh, in France. Uh, François Elena, are you with us? Well, while we're waiting, uh, it's just to remind you that all the all the partners that there we have different partners uh, within this Erasmus Plus uh, uh, project that are from uh, Portugal, and we just heard Sancia Viva. We also heard yesterday's the views uh, of um, uh, of uh, our network in Serbia with our partner Center for the Promotion of Science, and uh, finally we also heard a uh, uh, partner from Lithuania um, that were also presenting the the network in the. Uh, in Lithuania, and this is also a reason why we got the uh, the portal translated in the language of all the partners' country. Uh, so currently, we have the portal translated in French, Serbian, Lithuanian, and Portuguese. Uh, a question: We actually, in the meantime, while we're waiting, we have actually a question from the audience. Um, will the STEM school label be translated to uh, additional language? Uh, I mentioned already the the language from the partners, so like Spanish, Dutch, or any other language. Well, we are looking into possibilities and sources of funding for the translations. So none of uh, none of them uh, are secured yet, but. More users from a specific, uh, specific country that we have, the more we can tell uh, actually the corresponding Ministry of Education and industry partners that there is a real need for those uh, for this uh, translation. Um, and it was actually 
really interesting uh, to see uh, during uh, during uh, uh, this uh, uh, presentations from the different partners uh, about uh, the, the some of the criteria that uh, that we mentioned uh, yesterday. Uh, inquiry based uh, learning, for example, or leadership learning, leadership for change. Uh, so I just want to add that uh, uh, on those uh, specific criteria, and, and I think uh, Kathleen mentioned earlier that uh, they were the most difficult uh, criteria to address. Um, you can find resources that we provided you with some example yesterday during the session. Uh, so you can find resources such as the Le Learning Leadership for Change project, which will help you uh, improving uh, your activities uh, related to uh, school leadership. And, uh, and they just published actually a resource page uh, which will uh, which provides schools with many practical examples in order to uh, instore a school culture and and um, and uh, a change management approach uh, in highlighting a school leadership and I also want to highlight about the uh, the, the second criterion that was considered a bit difficult uh, uh, for some of the school um, inquiry based learning uh, that uh, there will be an Abgen teacher webinar uh, coming up soon uh, that we mentioned yesterday during the presentation uh, in order to um, how to implement uh, inquiry based science education. So I really encourage all the audience today to have a look at, at, at those resources and um, and, uh, and, uh, and and to find nice examples in order to uh, address those criteria. So now I think that uh, we have uh, Francois and Elena uh, there. So can you hear me? Are you uh, are you yes, with us? Well. Great. Well, okay. thank you. So I will just leave you the floor. They're going to present about the STEM strategy in France and how they're working on making STEM school label known in France. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. So uh, this will be a two voice presentation. I would I would to, uh, we do the first part. So I'm Francois, I'm the director of the Maison pour la Science, so Arts for Science in English, uh, a structure of the University of Strasbourg with, that is involved in teacher professional development in science. So, but before explaining uh, why we joined the, the STEM school label program and how we will try to make it known very well in France, so to increase the number of schools that are participating, I want to start by explaining briefly how STEM education is organized in our country. So if this slide just want to switch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. So first remark, uh, as probably you know, France is a very centralized country and all school programs are implemented nationally. So it's the same in all regions. So starting with the primary school. So at the primary school, mathematics is the most important subject in science. As everywhere, as everywhere else in our countries, mathematics are considered as a fundamental matter, not only for numbers, calculus and so forth, but as a way to develop a rigorous way of thinking and reasoning. Other STEM fields are also thought with an insistence on inquiry-based approach. The idea is to understand the world, especially the one created by humans, so by human technology, for example. If we switch to middle school, so in middle school, so pupils age from 12 to 16, all scientific fields are thought always, as in primary school, insisting on inquiry-based approach. In recent years, the possibility has been added to of a multidisciplinary approach. Either a teacher will teach different topics, so the same teacher will teach uh, chemistry, uh, life science and technology, or several teachers will work together and build a common program for the, for the pupils. And finally, the, we switch to the high school level. So STEM teaching at high school level is more complex since students will start choosing specialties. So I, I won't present everything. There is still a common core of STEM education, especially in the first year. Then the programs will diverge according to the, the choices made by the students. 
So I will not present uh, the details here. Just add that uh, interdisciplinarity is still very much encouraged. In addition to, to regular teaching, school classes or individual teachers are offered the possibility of involving their pupils in various extra scholar activities, challenges or competitions. I will not explain all these that are shown here, but insist on the fact that the panel is very, very wide. In the Assets for Science Network, we are especially involved in the, the first one, the college pilot, so pilot schools in English, that decide to carry out ambitious interdisciplinary science projects, usually involve, involving many different classes, sometimes the, sometimes the old school. So from all this, you can see that the STEM education in France is very well structured and offers a lot of possibilities. However, not all teachers are entirely ready to perform in this system. So more precisely, we can identify some difficulties. First, most of the primary school teachers have no scientific background. One of the consequences is that they will sometimes spend less time on science teaching than they should do. Also, most of the teachers have been trained in the top-down approach of teaching and are not very comfortable with inquiry-based approaches. And finally, most of the teachers are also very specialized and not always comfortable with teaching other disciplines or working, even working with colleagues from other disciplines. So the solution to these difficulties is obviously professional development. So my colleague Elena will now explain what we are doing at the Arts for Science in that matter. Thank you. So who are we? Uh, since 2012, the aim of the Arts of Science is to have teachers to bring innovation in their science teaching practices. Uh, each of the 12 houses implements in its region professional development formation to teachers from kindergarten uh, to the final year of middle school. Our objective is to carry an offer which promotes the actual and living science in close collaboration uh, with the national educational system, of course, university and local science structure. We try every day to go further than a classic uh, ready to use training. Uh, for that, we always think about new modalities of action with our teams uh, in which teachers may develop uh, their soft skills uh, for the benefit at the end uh, of the pupils, of course. For our action, we always try to focus on practicing uh, inquiry-based learning, interdisciplinarity, valorization of scientific process, which is very important, critical thinking, updating of current scientific knowledge, bringing the educational, scientific and industrial communities close together, and the same opportunities for all. A concrete example of multimodalities action uh, we create with electricity of France and the advanced industry and launched in uh, 2015 as part uh, of the International Year of Light. Uh, this also led uh, to a series of training courses related to the interdisciplinarity concept of energy. These trainings have been designed with uh, industrial actors, university scientific mediators and teachers. And uh, we think this kind uh, of thematics is perfect for cross fertilizing uh, everyone's interest and addressing subjects from pedagogical, scientific, uh, technical, historical, societal, and also environmental uh, points of view. Uh, after. And uh, we uh, at the House of Science. Uh, believe that uh, more uh, contribution and collaboration than numerous news, the richer the action are. Uh, that's why we join, uh, that's why joining a new project, it's always interesting for us. For uh, STEMS to label the interest what to be open to the practices of European colleagues and to buy together new tools uh, while having an analytical look around science teaching here and elsewhere. Um, we know that even if, if implementing this kind of project with teacher here is not always easy, uh, we have to maintain a dynamic of openness and being a force of proposal uh, and innovation. Uh, it's very important and always 
pushing us to thinking out of the box. Sorry. Uh, for example, our team is made up of teacher trainers and uh, scientists who work part time in our office and in their classrooms too, or, or laboratories. And for these projects and to label, we have the chance to involve our uh, mathematics teacher colleagues, uh, also trainer, uh, who was able to test and contribute to the platform with his teaching teams from Fetal College and uh, in an institution already very involved uh, in science and technology projects. Uh, it brings us a, a real field view on how to use this kind of project and how, how to take full advantages uh, of it to enrich uh, its own practices in class. So uh, the next steps for us, promoting uh, st uh, STEM school label for the future in France means adapting to a French context. Uh, so we will take advantage uh, of the fact that following the pandemic, our teachers have been uh, more encouraged than uh, usual to use online tools. And it's also, it's also seem important to insist that maintaining a um, network, European culture of networking it's very important and essential to the survival of this kind of project and to keep a, a real opening. Um, and maybe to help capture and maintain this interest among the French teacher, we believe that a concrete presentation uh, of the platform, like face-to-face -face meeting, would be more uh, appropriate for us. So, uh, ah, that's the end for me. <laughs> Uh, so we thank you warmly for listening to us and we remain uh, at your disposition for any questions uh, before giving the floor for uh, the other partners. Thank you. Thank you, Elena and Francois. Actually, we have one question. Uh, what would be the interest of, uh, of a French school in joining the STEM school label and entering a, a network, not only of uh, a network at, at the international level and not only uh, uh, collaborate at the national level? Well, the interest is, well, it's not special for French school. I mean, it's the same for all European schools. I mean, working in networks shows you what the others are doing and show, shows you that, that there are many possibilities that you didn't even talk, think about. And also it, shows, it gives you the occasion to show what you've been doing. And several schools have been doing some things that are just fantastic and they, they don't realize that these things are fantastic and, and that's, that's the occasion to share with the other and improve what they what they're doing. Thank you Francois and actually from the audience we can see that clearly that uh, uh, how important training at uh, European level was to, to inspire the teachers and uh, indeed the uh, training is essential and uh, we will um, have a number of, uh, of STEM MOOCs actually, uh, STEM courses in autumn, like uh, the STEM is everywhere uh, MOOC and the integrated STEM teaching MOOCs uh, that are dedicated to primary schools and secondary schools and that can inspire teachers uh, in um, uh, for their activities in the classroom. So we look forward to welcoming you uh, in, in, in those uh, in those course. Sure. And uh, uh, thank you, Francois, again, and uh, Elena, uh, for your presentation. And also, I want to, to say a warm thank you to all the other partners for supporting the project and supporting schools in developing further their STEM strategy and, most importantly, collaborate among each other. This is really important for us. And I think now it's time actually to wrap up today's events. Uh, I would like to inform you that we are working uh, on a report with the best practices identified since the beginning of the project and it should be published in the coming months on the platform. I will now give the floor to Mark Durando, the Executive Director of European Schoolnet, so he can tell you how developing a whole school approach regarding STEM education is important and how the STEM school level is contributing in this regard and promoting the collaboration among all school stakeholders. Mark, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Moving from a lot of uh, online events which are uh, planned in these uh, last two days, but uh, I'm on time for uh, uh, closing great. this uh, wonderful event. 
Who? Yes, that's great. Thank you for being with us. The floor is yours. Yeah, I'm only waiting that um, uh, Bjorn can provide my slides, maybe. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what we have learned from, from, from this event, and I just, uh, when I connected uh, uh, half an hour ago, I, I heard on the last presentation, and Noel mentioned again that the importance of training for, for teachers and um, what, what we learn from quite a lot of all our STEM projects we are developing at the level of European School Net uh, regarding the European cooperation is first the capacity building of teachers and head of schools. So it's quite essential that we, we pay a particular attention. We can provide teachers uh, the right environment in which they can exchange their practice, in, in, in which they can get access to expertise. And Noel mentioned the series of MOOCs, but uh, any capacity building initiative for teachers uh, has to be uh, further developed. And it also applies to head of schools and in particular within the context of this STEM school label project. So the second element is now the fact that uh, working with STEM teachers is not enough and it's, it's absolutely essential. But we have to embark the head of schools and we have to support the development of a STEM school strategy and to offer an ecosystem to schools, um, especially as um, facing STEM challenges is really uh, a huge task and it has to be part of the global uh, answer of the organization as a whole. And uh, the third point, and it, it maybe has not been so mentioned within the STEM school label activities, is also to consider and to further develop the cooperation with industry. Contextualization of STEM teaching is really an important uh, element, and it should become, uh, I would say, business as usual at the level of all schools in Europe. Uh, what are the pathways for um, overcoming STEM challenges. So we could have identified more elements, but I, I, I'll try to limit it four major building blocks here. First is a barrier between subjects. And it is essential that we, we can break the, the barriers between subjects with pragmatic initiatives and that it can generate more collaboration between teachers, but also guidance counselors. And um, it is linked also to the importance to progressively develop an integrated STEM education framework and provide appropriate reference for in that area for supporting schools and, and the community of STEM teachers. Industry education cooperation is important. I already mentioned it, context, the contextualization of STEM teaching, but also some elements linked to the role models, especially as we have to fight against the disinterest of young students first to take up STEM studies, but more later on to take up STEM jobs. And in that context, role models is an important element. And finally, the global school strategy. It is absolutely vital that we can support a global school strategy regarding STEM education, associating all, all the actors of the school. So we are here in the concept of shared leadership, uh, where the head of schools can animate and can support the global STEM school strategy with the input of all the relevant uh, colleagues, will it be STEM teachers, career advisors and other school actors. Uh, so I, I would like now to move more on um, the situation that we have faced uh, linked to the COVID-19 uh, situation as it will have an impact on the on the school strategy as well. And there are maybe the first question we can we, we, we can ask and we, we can wonder all together is where, where are education systems prepared to, to deal with such a crisis? Uh, we saw quite a lot of emergency remote teaching approaches in uh, a lot of countries all over the planet and more has been done regarding the, the use of technology in education in these last two months and I would say now more four months 
uh, than in the last 20 years. However, uh, there has been a lot of uh, issues that we have encountered. I think the next slides to, to move on. Um, the first is certainly the, <clears throat> the issue of uh, infrastructure and connectivity. And uh, on that particular aspect, uh, quite a lot of platform were, were not necessarily configured in an appropriate way and had difficulties to support the huge increase of traffic. And also there are a lot of issues linked to inclusion as in terms of infrastructure, maybe all students were not appropriately equipped with uh, the computers or laptops and also there may be have, uh, also some connectivity issues uh, in some countries. It was quite frequent that there was only one uh, mobile phone for uh, two or three children to, to be shared for accessing to internet at home. So the second issue is more on digital competence of teachers and the pedagogical use of, of uh, educational technology. And that's an important element here. And it can also apply much more at the, at the level of the STEM teachers. How difficult has it been for STEM teachers to deliver uh, teaching at distance? Uh, especially when we discuss about science experimentation, where we look at uh, practice work uh, within the laboratories, how STEM teachers have, uh, have, have faced such a situation, how have they found some solutions on it, and it was quite an important element. And it's connected to the uh, innovative pedagogies, and quite a lot of teachers have developed um, a lot of innovative approaches, we noticed um, uh, in quite a lot of studies which have been which are starting being published in quite a lot of countries now that the teachers who suffered the least from this emergency remote teaching approaches were teachers which were familiar already with the flipped classroom approach as um, they already had prepared the resources the materials the video the students were ready to already organize themselves starting working from home and that's only the collaborative part which had to be reorganized at distance uh, as previously it was taking place within the school walls. And finally, the organization of the school in the emergency uh, period, remote teaching period, has been uh, quite um, an issue as well for uh, the head of schools, how to keep the link with teachers, how to keep the link with parents, how to organize uh, online examinations. So there has been quite a lot of issues there which um, uh, have had to be solved and, uh, and uh, head of schools had a very important role in that context. I would like to, to finish now by more reflecting on which school strategy uh, we should have for the future. And um, I have a certain number of, of, uh, of elements to share with, with the audience. First is to really question on how to teach science topics at distance. It's, it's very important to, to, to reflect on this. We will launch at the level of European School Net a, a survey in the next weeks to come regarding all practitioners with a particular focus for STEM teachers as well, as it is important to know uh, what type of educational uh, solu technology solutions teachers have, have taken what difficulties they have, they have encountered, what recommendations they would like, they would like to formulate, uh, so we can learn from them and see how we can support them further. It's even more important for the school to have a STEM strategy, uh, and this STEM strategy, certainly in the next months to come, will have to integrate also a potential blended learning approach. There may be schools which may reopen, other schools may not all reopen, so that will be quite important to, to integrate this potential blending learning approach scenarios. And in that context, it, it providing the schools with the necessary tools to engage the students, teachers and other actors in related activity for developing an appropriate STEM strategy will be very important. In, in one word, uh, we have to offer an ecosystem for the schools where they can 
assess the situation and you discussed that during your two days at the, at the STEM school label high level event. But we also have to continue keeping the contact with all these uh, school community by exchanging on their experience and their practice with other schools as well. That's what the STEM school label project has tried to, to achieve in its three years of activities. And we hope we will now continue to further develop the activities and keep the community alive and continue exchanging with all of you. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you, Mark, for your contributions and for highlighting the importance of STEM school label uh, for schools in uh, now and in, and in the future. Uh, now, to conclude, I just want to mention that uh, this online event uh, today and yesterday is part of a new series of STEM online days. Um, and I also want to remind to all the partners of the STEM Alliance that they have a closed meeting this afternoon starting at 1 p.m. and that they should follow the instructions sent by email in order to join the event. Now the recording of this online event together with this uh, with the slides will be available in the following days in the STEM school label platform as well as on Scientix and STEM Alliance portals and we will send a follow up email with all the details to all the participants that signed the participants list. So make sure you added the requested information to the Padlet. Thank you so much to all the presenters of today for your really interesting presentations and your support. Thank you also uh, to all the participants of this two day event for the, your questions and for your contribution to this event. That's all from my side. It was a pleasure seeing you all online this morning. Have a nice afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for your participation to this event.